Welcome to the pit, fellow gladiators. I'm here with Barbarian Queen Salad for another episode of I Played a Thing, Dark Souls 2, a Scholar of the First Sin. And our Fashion Souls ensemble today combines the Lion Warrior cape with the Prisoner's Waistcloth. And because this is a very light outfit, I have enough equipped space to wear those engraved gauntlets that we picked up last episode. So maybe we'll get a few critical hits today. Anyway, I am here in the pit of Man Scorpion Tark, because as I mentioned, he has another reward for us for uh, getting to the very end of this branch and defeating the Duke's dear Freya. And it's a really, really good reward. So let us claim it, shall we? What skill? You've defeated my master. But our master never dies, and he changes form so that he may seethe for all eternity. Brave human, you have yet to face your greatest perils. Take these. May joy await you at the end of your travels. Oh, oh yeah. Also, so he may seethe for all eternity. I see what you did there, Tark. Yeah, that's what I was talking about when I said there was eventually a dead giveaway. Now well, that little bit of wordplay is exactly what I was referring to. And yes, it does appear that old Seath managed to achieve a certain immortality. He changes forms, but he never dies. And I guess, you know, if you get stuck in the body of a giant double-headed spider every now and then, that's the price you pay. I have no gods to bring, but still... So let's take a look at the stuff we got. First of all, there is the Black Scorpion Stinger, which is some kind of small weapon, I believe. Where is that? There we are. That's oh, a thrusting sword. The Scorpion Pincher Guard. Pincer? The Scorpion Pincer Guard contains poison, which is injected into foes pierced by the blade. Tark's past is a thing obscure, but then again, do any of us know who we are, let alone what we may have been? So, nothing too terribly exciting there, if you want a pointy poker that uh, inflicts poison buildup. I'm pretty sure it's just poison and not toxic. Well, there's your option. But that was a, uh, a, whatchamacallit, uh, a dex weapon. Yes. Oh, and it actually has no scaling. So that's kind of a bummer. On the other hand, that means you could make it raw and just give it some high base damage. Or you could uh, infuse it with an element if you want scaling of some sort. Oh, and how can I forget? The second dragon ring. There are three dragon rings, uh, the first of which is a reward you get for leveling up in the company of champions if you're into the whole hard mode thing. Uh, the second dragon ring, which is a straight upgrade, is obtained right where we got it just now. And the third is one that uh, you can get a little later in the game, and we will be trading up to that as soon as we can. So we won't need this ring of whispers anymore. Let's go ahead and find that second dragon ring. Here it is. Increases HP, stamina, and maximum load. So it improves our HP, we'll get some extra stamina, and uh, it is an improvement on our carrying capacity. And as you can see, it takes us right down to 62.6. So it's kind of like the Fap Ring from Dark Souls 1, the Ring of Favor and Protection. The difference is, you can take the second Dragon Ring off any time you want. It won't break. However, it has very, very poor durability, so... Just about anything that causes equipment damage will make it break, but at least you can repair it. And uh, it is important to note that you cannot stack dragon rings, like you couldn't wear the first, second, and third. That would be a little OP. But you can stack the equipment burden improvement with the Royal Soldier's Ring, or stack any of its other improvements with any other rings, so that's a plus. So that there is going to be a big benefit to us, and I think we can probably ditch the Royal Soldier's Ring for now and get our Covenant Ring on, just in case anyone wants to do a little PvP in the Belfries. 
Also, I would like to draw attention to my souls. Nearly 50,000. That is how many I accumulated just trying to farm this damnable lion warrior cape. I don't know what I did, but the, uh, the random drop gods are clearly enraged with me this particular playthrough. Ah, well. Oh, and there's something else we haven't seen. I almost forgot. Last time, when we put uh, Duke Seldora out of his misery, we acquired the Seldora Key. And we're going to be making use of that in just a bit. However, I never actually showed you the description for it. So let's take care of that before I go and forget again. I'm sorry, the Brightstone Key, not the Seldora Key. Key to Brightstone Cove Seldora. The eccentric Lord Seldora, known for his fascination with spiders, built a town and a personal fortune by mining Brightstone. One day the town was overrun by spiders, but Lord Seldora only stood by and watched, eerily contented. So there's that bit of lore I mentioned last episode, but I wasn't sure exactly where it was, indicating good uh, Lord Seldora's fascination with spiders. That ended up kind of biting himself and everyone else in the ass, but... Well, I suppose it's good to have a hobby. You just can't let it get out of control. Let's see, what else is of importance? Oh yes, the pickaxe. There is a really, really weird easter egg in Brightstone Cove Seldora, spanning pretty much the entire level. And what that involves is... Here at the Royal Army campsite, you have to get one of the pigs to follow you. And uh, if you can kite a pig all the way down from the army camp to the cathedral just before Freya's lair, then the pig will dig up a pickaxe for you. This is completely not worth it. Like, the uh, the pickaxe, it's a clumsy and not particularly good weapon. It's like a fairly standard great hammer, I think, in moveset, but it's not even that good statistically. So, I don't really know why you would ever feel any burning need to acquire the pickaxe, and it's a lot of trouble to get. Kiting a pig over that kind of distance is genuinely difficult. But, it's there if you really want to. I'm trying to get rid of this mage here, but he's being very uncooperative. Oh, spiders. Back through the door, please. Thank you. Now then, if you're done dodging and weaving, we can finally get some shots off on you. Except you're not done. That's better. I'm gonna pop his buddy over here. Because there's one other thing we can do here, now that we've defeated Freya. And that's cash in her soul with Ornifex. Strayed does not have anything for the Duke's dear Freya soul. Oh, I see some spiders out there. Let's make sure we get rid of them so they don't interfere with me while I'm trying to do business with Ornifex here. And there we go. I sure do. Now our options here are not going to be very practical for Salad because they're both dex weapons, but we can take a look at them all the same and take one along. There is the Spider Fang, which is a curved sword with high dex requirement and high dex scaling. A curved sword forged from the soul of the Duke's dear Freya. Its blade is coated with a sticky silk that is cast with each strong attack, slowing enemy movement. Supposedly, the Duke himself, an eccentric soul fascinated with spiders, went on to take a form that was far from human. 
I'm not sure what they mean by that. We found the Duke, and he was all hollowed out. Anyway, the special move with the strong attack of the Spider Fang shoots a little glob of spider silk, and if that connects, it webs up the enemy and slows them down. That's kind of useful. And the Spider's Silk has a somewhat more modest dex requirement, but really high dex scaling. S is as good as it gets. This is a thrusting sword forged from the soul of the Duke's dear Freya. Its needle-like blade can easily pierce the seams of the toughest armor. Supposedly, the Duke himself, etc., etc. And the uh, strong attack of this will go right through a shield. So those are both some pretty good auxiliary effects. I kind of like the uh, the whole thrusting sword thing, so we'll take the spider's silk, even though I'm not likely to even be able to use it, let alone want to use it on this particular run. Come back again if you find another soul. Uh, no doubt I will be seeing you again indeed, Orny. Our next goal is to make our way back to the cathedral where we can make use of that uh, that Brightstone key we just uh, picked up from the Duke last episode. There's absolutely nothing mandatory or even super important there. However, there is some rather nice treasure. And if there's one thing we know never to skip out on, it's nice treasure. And here we are. Let's see what's inside for us. Hmm, looks a little suspicious. I can't actually remember for sure if there's a spider ambush here, but it looks like the kind of place that would have one. If there's one thing I know about Souls games, it's that if they give you a warning, it's best to pay it heed. Up, oh. Knew it. Anyone else? Good. Aha! Looks like we get some nice pyromancy accessories and the Black Knight Ultra Greatsword. Well, we know what a fire seed looks like. Let's have a look at Great Fireball. The strongest form of fireball creates a giant fireball that is hurled at foes. The exalted flame long pined after, even if it would scorch our very flesh. You know, I don't think this is strictly accurate, though. The strongest form of fireball, if I recall correctly, is Great Chaos Fireball, which does exist in this game. Well, never mind that. The Black Knight Ultra Greatsword, I think, might have the same uh, text as the other Black Knight equipment, but we'll track it down and check on that. It's got some higher dex requirements than the other Ultra Great Swords, and I'm not quite up for it. Also, interestingly, it's got a... Is that an intelligence requirement or a faith? Yeah, that's a faith requirement. Weird. Yep, pretty much the same flavor text as the other Black Knight stuff. That might be a nice weapon to fiddle around with if I met the stat requirements, but sadly I do not. Well then, let's go ahead and make our way back to Majula where we can trade in that fire seed. 
Also, I might want to take a look at upgrading some other things, because I do have a an extra supply of chunks now. And finally, having so many souls to spare, there's one other thing that I should do while I've got the money to burn. Matter of fact, let's begin with that. We haven't done any business with our buddy Laddersmith Gilligan in a while. And there's a good reason that we should. Now think about all the regions that we've had access to and all the ones we've explored thoroughly. Aside from the other branches in the Shaded Woods, which are currently blocked off to us, there's really not a whole lot left except the Honey Bucket here. Yep, we are going to have to descend into the shithole for our next branch of the Well Endowed. And old Gilligan here can help us out with that. Come to see Owl Gilligan, Navia. <laughs> and we will want him to set up some ladders for us. You want to go down that awful hole? You must have lost your marbles. <laughs> fine, sure, fine. I'm happy to be of service. You need a ladder then, sure enough. But you'll, uh, you'll have to show some generosity. Well, yeah, Gilligan don't care as long as he gets paid. All right, I'm sure 500 souls would be considered more than generous. You just don't get it, do ya? Fine then. Now it's my turn. This ladder's not for sale. The, the only things I sell are miniatures. I mean, if that tickles your fancy, you can buy as many as you like. <laughs> so, yes, if you only give Gilligan the smallest possible donation, shall we call it, he puts a very uselessly short ladder in place just to spite you. As a matter of fact, I think if you actually try and climb down that ladder and drop off the end, you'll just fall to your death. So it is completely useless. Well, that's fine. But if you want my help, you'll need to make me an offer. Alright, alright, I think I get the idea. A very reasonable offer. Just you wait. Well, that's a little more like it, but I think we can do a little better still. Well, that's... Well, really, a very generous offer indeed, especially from you. I get such a warm feeling inside when I get the chance to help others. <laughs> Now that's a ladder, and if I'm not mistaken, buying all of Gideon's ladder services is what will unlock his customer bonus for you, so let's talk to him and see if he'll give us anything special for that. Here you are, my friend. You can have these, eh? It's a little bonus, you know, for your big purchase. Oh, come on. Don't look so glum. I'm trying to be nice here. You're hopeless, I tell you. 
Nah, I appreciate you, Gilligan. You make me smile. Anywho, he did mention his ladder miniatures, and uh, we will want to pick one up. There's no obvious function, as the flavor text says, but we will find it useful eventually. And again, we've got money to burn, so why not? Cheers for that. <laughs> All right, then let's take a quick look at that scimitar that he gave us as our customer gift. Scimitar of Laddersmith Gilligan. Nothing notable about this weapon except perhaps the luxurious jewels embedded in the hilt. If your aim is to appear dazzling on the battlefield, this might just do the trick. Well, for a guy like Gilligan, I guess that seems like a pretty appropriate sort of weapon. I still say Laddersmith isn't a real job, though. Oh, yes, and we do have a fire seat, so we might as well get our pyro hand a bit buffed up. Not that we've been making any particular use of it, but hey, it's good to have. I'm glad to see you're well. There we go, plus seven. It's getting up there. I'm always here. And let's see how we're doing on chunks and what we can maybe get out of old Leningrast here. And we've got... Oh, we don't have our greatsword maxed out yet. I falsely remembered I had done that. Well, let's do that. Alright, and taking this up to plus 10 will give it a base damage of 400 and we will have S strength scaling on it, so that's gonna be a really nice improvement on an already really nice weapon. And, hmm, do I want to max out my spare? I don't think I do right now, honestly. Yeah, let's finish uh, maxing out the hammer just for a fast weapon and strike damage when we need it. That will empty us out on chunks, but that just means we'll start after saving up again. My grammar was a complete mess there, but you know what I was trying to say. And see, that's not nearly as powerful. It's, it's going to have a 290 base damage with B strength scaling, but that's still not bad. And with the bonus we often get for strike damage, a very respectable weapon indeed. I'll be around if you make it back. Alright then. Something else I find myself wondering while we're wrapping up some miscellaneous issues today. How am I doing on fragrant branches? Two of them. Hmm. Well, that's not super exciting, but you know what? I feel like upgrading the Sunny D. So what I'm gonna do is make a little run back to uh, Hades Tower of Flame. We haven't been there in quite a while. You may recall in the tower interior, on the path to No Man's Wharf, there was a stairway blocked by a petrified hollow blocking the way to a uh, mastodon or primal knight if you prefer and along that path if we can open our way to it there's going to be an estus flask shard <laughs> we can't quite one shot the old knights yet but we're not far from it Here's the place. I'm 
actually a little surprised that guy could take a hit from my uh, greatsword here, even with his shield up. Anyway, this is what we came for. I do like the fact that most of the places that you can find these petrified guys, they put a basilisk there just to show you how it happened. <laughs> this is the sort of nice attention to detail that we've come to expect from the Soul series. Even if we can't backstab here, being behind your opponent is a good place to be. And that takes care of that. Marvelous. Alright then, let's go get our upgrade. I know, I'm going through the bones kind of quick here, but I do think I'm going to end up with more of them than I actually need. Yeah, it is. Let me to see light. However, nine, nine wonderful chugs. Oh, you know what? There is one other thing about the uh, the Duke's Dear Freya fight that I totally forgot to mention when I uh, actually did it, and I just now remembered. If you focus all of your damage on one of her heads, it will eventually fall off. And once the head is on the ground, it doesn't disappear, and you can kick it around like some kind of really gross soccer ball. And also her minion spiders are afraid of the severed head. So you can use it to kind of herd them around or get them away from you if you need to. Also, there's a nasty little bug involving that that I'm really surprised hasn't been patched out yet. Uh, if... Freya gets healed, like if you use a spell that can you that can heal enemies, of which I believe there is one, then uh, if she ends up having more health in total than she's actually supposed to, then both heads can be chopped off, and then it becomes impossible to damage the boss, because the heads are the only weak point. So yeah, that can be a little bit of a, a battle breaker there, and it's a way for uh, co-op phantoms to troll the host if they want to. Pretty rude, but... It's a thing that can be done. And yes, we have enough here for a level. I'll save my consumables for now, just in case I end up needing them for some reason. What do I want? Well, strength is pretty good, but it could be better. Same for... Vigor, Vitality, and Adaptability. A little more HP. This is kind of a serendipitous level from all that lion cape farming I had to do, so we'll just go that route with it. Let's see. And since we've been proceeding in the vein of optional loose ends to wrap up, I think we'll continue in that vein for now. And one thing we can do is make use of that iron key of ours. You may recall the iron key being what we picked up in the foyer of the Iron Keep, where uh, where we had to turn off a flamethrower in order to grab it without getting ourselves roasted. And where we can actually use it is right back where things uh, very nearly started. The first proper non-tutorial area, the Forest of Fallen Giants. Well, these guys have certainly become trivial, haven't they? We have come quite a long way. Now then, it is entirely possible, especially with fall damage reduction gear such as we are currently wearing in the form of the Lion Cape, 
Just let's do a plunging attack down here onto the uh, onto the salamander. But we're going to do this the proper way, which involves using the iron key. Let's bring up the ironclad here just to take care of it. Now you can see these ones are a lot weaker than the ones that were in the Iron Keep. They go down easier and they don't do as much damage. And if you have a good memory, you may recall that down here in the passage... We had a door that we couldn't get into along the path to the last giant. What's this summon sign? Loot summon sign is still here? I really thought that would have disappeared after the boss fight, but I guess not. Anyway, here we have an iron door, which I guess was looted from the iron keep and brought all the way back here. And now we can open it. And perhaps surprisingly, walking on this uh, hot coal type of floor, or through the little flames, all over the floor doesn't hurt. We can do it as much as we want. Ooh, that was surprisingly painful. I guess that attack's not completely blockable. I know it's not a fire damage thing because we have a 100% fire block shield. Anyway, salamanders are no joke. You have to treat them with a little... oh, good god! with a little respect. Wow, they are tougher than I remembered. And as you can see, in addition to their fire breath, they do have some fairly powerful tongue attacks. Oh god. Oh, it's all gone wrong. Uh, getting the attention of two at once is never an entirely healthy thing. Alright. Let's say we try and approach this with a little more prudence and intelligence this time. Man, they have a lot of HP. I completely forgot them being so resilient. What are you doing, dude? And we can tank those fireballs with our, uh, with our tombstone shield, but they still do take off quite a bit of... God, what the hell? What is even happening? Ah! I've really got to be more careful about the one over there shooting on me. I'm going to try and get myself out of his line of sight. Job number one get... Oh man. It goes right through my guard, doesn't it? I wonder if I can poison these. be a little cheap, but it could work. If I don't get myself blasted on. Ah, it's super effective. Well, you know what? I ain't too proud. Just a little too much of a danger zone there for my liking. Much better. Uh, then let me get these back. Oh, you're gonna come over and play, will ya? Man, I do not know why that is doing so much damage through my block there. I do not like it. 
Whoa, nice. I'm not sure I've ever actually seen them do that before. Just kind of slide on their little salamander bellies. Well, when we're not getting sniped by another one lurking in the wings, we're putting up a much more respectable show. God damn, I gotta remember I cannot block those melee attacks. I don't know if they just hit too hard that they're overwhelming my guard or what the situation is. It also occurs to me belatedly that I could, uh, if I were not hollow, bring sellsword loot around for a distraction. Lord knows he could certainly tank those hits. But anyway, there's treasure down here, that's the important thing. Couple of cracked red eye orbs, not a big invader, so that's not of terrible interest to us. This, on the other hand, is a very nice little trove. First of all, the Heavy Iron Key is what we would use to get into the second DLC, which is based around the old Iron King. Let's take a quick look at that. A piece of iron shaped like a key. Past the altar deep within the Iron Keep, and through a door is the tower that the old Iron King used to produce iron. The unearthly weight of this chunk of iron is a reminder of the Iron King's own immeasurable strength. Hmm. So, in addition to being powerful, he was a pretty strong guy, too. Anyway, in the vanilla game, you would get this item when you purchased the second DLC to let you into it, but since the Scholar re-release comes with all the DLC just to begin with, you have to find these items in the world. As for the Rebel Great Shield, but we need to look under shields, of course. Shield of the Rebel Rame. Rame and Velstadt were known as the left and right arms of the king until their wills clashed and Rame was deemed a traitor. The Black Raven is despised as an augur of death, but it was Rame's favorite bird. Well, both Rame and Velstadt are going to be pretty important in the story as the uh, bodyguards of King Vendrick, but we're not going to be learning any more about them for a while. Rest assured, though, they will figure into our future quite directly. And right here is where that uh, that salamander was shooting through the gap where we found that flame sword a while back. So now we get to see that from the other side. Up this way, I believe we're going to have another one. Yep, the one down in the fire pit that we could see from above in Cardinal Tower. Let's begin with a little poison, just like we did before. Get some of those nice damage over time. Yeah, that'll help out. And then we can move in and finish the job. Hopefully I will not regret this. I can tank your fireballs. What you gonna do, huh? You just gonna stand there? Oh, you're gonna fireball some more. Okay, well, you get to. I'm just gonna keep fireballing and not really exposing yourself, huh? Well, your funeral. Oh. Well, not completely ineffective as a tactic, I suppose. Didn't even get my poison off. There it goes. And there he goes. Now then, is that all of them? Oh, nope, one more. Oh, we know what to do about that. Gotta be quick on the draw, though. quicker than that. There we go. Well, they can redo their aim in a hurry, can't they? Oh, 
Oh shit. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, let's try this again, and let's keep a better watch on our stamina this time, and not run into trouble so readily. We'll start with getting our dots on. More dots, more dots, more dots. There we go. Now, I could completely cheese this thing, and probably should, but... I'm feeling ornery now. I'm gonna get my sleigh on. And their tracking on that fire breath is good, I gotta give them credit. This time, don't be so aggressive, build up that stamina. And make the miss if you can, that always helps. Oh, and that was a critical hit! You might have heard that louder tearing sound, I'm not sure if you could quite make it out on the recording, but yeah, when I landed that last hit, it kind of went whoosh! And that was the uh, engraved bracers kicking in. I don't think the treasure in the pit here is anything really exciting, but... Consumable souls and elemental infusions are nice to have, just in case we need them. Ah, and this is where the Hawk Ring is. Nice to see that's still around. And where is it hiding in my inventory, pray tell? There we go. A ring graced with the engraving of a hawk. Extends the range of arrows. Blue-eyed Durgo, the nomadic bowman, had many a valiant victory in battle half owing to the boon of this ring. Well, not only that, we remember where that ring came from, don't we? Yeah, it once uh, belonged to our good buddy Hawkeye Goff. Nice guy, hell of an elbow drop. One other thing of significance here. You can see that uh, when you've slain all the salamanders underground, the fires in the fire pit go out. So we now know what the origin of the flames here in the Forest of Fallen Giants was. And finally, we get a slightly improved Flame Quartz Ring. So there's also that. And that's all there really is down here for us, and rather than making my way back to the uh, bonfire the hard way, I'll just drop another bone. We've got enough. I'm going to pop back to Majula real quick and grab myself a level. And then, in the Forest of Fallen Giants, there is one more thing while we're wrapping up Loose Ends that, uh... We don't really need to do, but a little optional area for our investigation. Bear, see, see, less. Last time we grabbed ourselves up some HP, so what are we going to get this time? Vitality's looking fairly strong for the moment, although we will eventually want more of that. Um, let's say adaptability. We don't get a point of agility for it this time, but we'll build up to our next one. And back to Cardinal Tower we go, where we will find one more door that we did not previously uh, investigate using our soldier's key that we got for defeating the last giant. And actually, there's going to be a new NPC hollow coming up soon, so I'll go ahead and pop an effigy. We can spare them. I'm kind of surprised these guys haven't despawned yet. Thought I would have killed them enough times by now. Okay. 
And if I'm not mistaken, that last soldier door is going to be... Yeah, I think it's the one right there. And what we've got here is a very dark basement. Quite a bit darker than it was in the original game, thanks to Scholar's new lighting engine. But right here we've got a new NPC summon, also just introduced for Scholar. Well, he's elsewhere in the game, but he was, wasn't in this location before. Ruined Atlas. It's got a very interesting appearance. Looks like a gazing orb wearing a hula skirt from the neck up. And one thing I've noticed about Aphlis's AI is that it has a 100% chance of casting Cast Light. As soon as Cast Light runs out, he'll just do another cast of it. And down here we've got some skeletons, so let's see what else Aphlis can do. Yeah, he's got some shooting powers. I think in addition to the basic Soul Arrow, he's also got Soul Spear, he just doesn't use it as often. Soul Spear is pretty damn powerful. See, he runs out of Cast Light, he pops it off again instantly. And yes, I do see the treasures in the sconces, I just want to get this area cleared out first. So let us run back to the start, and I will do some sparking up, and a little bit of looting. This area, again, is completely optional. There's nothing mission critical in any way, shape, or form, but potentially a few nice things to find. Nathalus is already looking kind of dark there. I guess he doesn't have a whole lot of duration on his uh, shade summon. Well, that's okay. We can help him fulfill his duty. And if we ever come this way again, we'll have all the torches lit up, so we won't need his uh, cast light assistance quite so much. Alright, think we can put that away. Aphlis, I don't think we really need cast light so much anymore. Dude, there's a guy right over there. You could be shooting at him. Alright, well, draw his fire. That's good enough, I suppose. Now, if I recall correctly, in this vicinity, there are going to be a whole lot of ironclads, so we will want to proceed with some caution. And as always, use our arrows to pull them out when we can. Aphlis, what are you doing? You should be shooting these guys. Oh, I didn't know he had hexes. Well, apparently he's got hexes. Let's see what's going on in here. It's curious, I don't know whether the game really expects you to explore here earlier or later, because there are a lot of basic enemies, like these infantry hollows, but there are also quite a bunch of uh, ironclads in the area, and uh, on top of that there's one rather nasty invader that we'll eventually uh, get the attention of. Well, trying to be sneaky back there. Oh, thanks, Atlas.
Well, that's interesting. I guess if you're not in a dark area, Athlas won't uh, actually do his cast light. I thought he always did it. But as we have established, my memory is kind of a failure sometimes. Especially with respect to uh, how tough salamanders are. I heard something. Sounds like an ironclad. Where is it? Oh! Hi there! Oh shit, it's a regular party. That's not a good situation at all. <laughs> and Athlas just got launched. That was kind of amusing. But despite being a mage, he is an NPC, which means he's very tough. And there's that dark spirit we were told to be wary of. It's another appearance by our buddy, Armorer Dennis. Who, despite being an armorer, is primarily primar yeah, I can't talk. Primarily a caster. Well, if he wants to melee with us, throw down a close range, we're not going to complain. We can really put a hurting on him with our shiny new plus ten greatsword. And that'll make up for the effigy we just spent. So well and good. And here we get the leather set and the hunter hat. The hunter hat is just like the, uh, the jaunty chapeau from the original Dark Souls. So maybe we'll show that off in the future, uh, Fashion Souls explorations. But the most interesting thing here is this. Now the, uh, dead giant tree here it starts out with a certain percentage of spawning a seed of a tree of giants, which you can see hanging off of it there. The chance starts out low, and every time you repel an invader, it gets a little higher. And eventually I believe it does reach 100%, so if you've defeated enough invaders, I'm pretty sure you can always get the seed of a tree of giants here. Um, how do I pick it up? There we go. And it disappears from the arm, but I believe uh, with some more invader repulsions, it will eventually grow another one. A giant rests in peace. The Seed of a Tree of Giants was one of the gifts that you can pick in the early game, or rather, at character creation. Let's see if I can find where that's hiding. There we go. A lump of something obtainable from a giant tree makes enemies react to invaders. When the giants fell, they grew into great trees. Death is not the end, for anything that has ever once lived remains a part of a great cycle of regeneration. But what of those outside of the cycle? So, in certain situations, the seed of a tree of giants can actually be very valuable, because, as the description implies, it means enemies will attack invaders. And that includes NPC invaders. And there's one in particular that I want to have at least one Seed of a Tree of Giants for, because that is an NPC invader who can give me a lot of trouble, and if we have some assistance from the enemies, it will become much, much easier. Alright then, it's looking like this isn't going to be much of a progress update, but we're tying up some loose ends that we would eventually have to uh, wrap up later, so we can just spend uh, one of our episodes on that and not have to worry about it another time. Now one thing we can do, although we're not actually going to proceed into any of the next actual areas, is do a little exploration of the pit here. Let's see, which was the medium ladder? I think that's the one on this side. Now something else that can be helpful here is to have a uh, 
a ring or some equipment to reduce your fall damage. The silver cat ring is good for people who want to do this in the really early game. But we have the, uh, the lion cape, so we can drop down a bit without having to worry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that struck me straight up speechless there. I guess the Lion Warrior cape isn't as good as the Silver Cat Ring. Wow, I'm setting some kind of death record for this episode, and they're really dumb deaths. Oh well. Let's, uh, let's try that Silver Cat Ring after all. I don't think I've bought it yet, have I? It's kind of expensive if I recall correctly, so let's go ahead and give ourselves some extra souls for the uh, for the purchase here oh <laughs> you do have the time here we are silver ring depicting a leaping feline reduces damage from falling legend has it that when cats grow old the force brews within them and they are reborn as something new well, death and rebirth, really big theme for this game. Satisfied? I'll be around if you ever come back. Okay. So let us get equipped with that. And hopefully we can somewhat more gracefully pick up some of the treasure here that we would bypass if we took the ladders. There we go. Still hurt quite a bit, but at least it's getting us there. By the way, the ladders are not strictly necessary here. It is possible with the Silver Cat Ring and enough health to drop to all the places you technically need to, but I think the ladders will give us access to some treasures that we couldn't otherwise pick up normally. Also, you do not want to drop on those narrow crossbeams. They will break under your weight. Let's see if we can get over there. Looks like that's where one of the ladders would uh, take us. The middle ladder, I believe. And what we're about to drop to on that landing there is an optional area, which is the second Rat Covenant area, the Grave of Saints, which you may recall uh, Laddersmith Gilligan mentioned that there was a Grave of Saints down the shithole. Quite disrespectful, really. But as you might imagine from the giant uh, Rat Head Gateway, this is the second Rat Covenant area, and it does have its own boss different from the Royal Rat Authority, so we will probably be exploring that next time. We'll just light the bonfire so we can get back to that easily. And let's see. Is there any more dropping we can do here? Hmm, I think there might not be. So, hmm. No, wait, we can probably get to that one. That one if I drop down real carefully, real straight-like. I could jump over there, but I think the uh, the beams would block me. Alright. Might die here, but we'll give it a shot. I actually lived. Not bad. Okay, and this direction, I believe, is actual progress to the next uh, branch of paths for the next well-endowed. 
It is also, I believe, possible to make your way here through the Grave of Saints. Well, let's go ahead and see what's down this way. There are a few things we can pick up before we actually have to move on. Ooh, and a lizard. Lizard, lizard. What the hell was that salad? Well, I kind of screwed that up. Alright then, well, let's just see if we can make the jump to the chest over there. The Ash Knuckle Ring. I don't remember what that does, so let's find out. Knuckle Ring, worn by Roy the Explorer. Increases petrification resistance. Petrification is tantamount to death, and in that sense, this knuckle ring is a charm that may save your life. Okay, well that answers that. And there's one more thing over there which I think is meant to be grabbed by jumping from the bridge up there, but it is possible to make the jump over the gap here, albeit difficult, so let's give it a try. Well, that's clearly not how it's done. And you want to be careful here, we've got some exploding uh, undead citizens. Well, that'll be nice for getting us out of here. And Great Heal, which I don't believe we previously had, so we can take a look at that. A glorious miracle only accessible to a small minority of clerics. Greatly restores HP. Only a select few have learned to recite this epic romance in its entirety, but those who do are amply rewarded. It's a long epic romance, huh? Kind of a pain in the ass that you have to tell the story of Beowulf every time you want a big heal. Not too sure what a royal guard is doing down here, but no matter. Ooh, I'm glad I stopped by. Alright, let's bone ourselves out of here, and I think there's one more thing that we can get if we take the longest ladder down. I will check on that. The longest ladder, I think, is the one on this side. And yes, that does give us access to something special, which is this little side path up here. But oh, I forgot. We don't actually have the key for that yet, so we'll have to come back later. Alright, fair play.
Alright then, folks. Not a whole lot accomplished this update, but we did do a little side exploration, pick up a few extra things. Saw me die a lot in a number of very stupid ways, which may have been of some entertainment value at least. And next time, we will get right back into the proper swing of things, and, uh... We'll explore the Grave of Saints and do the second Rat Covenant area, and then maybe we'll move on and see what's at the very bottom of the pit. Thank you very much for watching, folks. It has been a pleasure as always, and I hope to see you again next time. Take care. We at I Played a Thing would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude once again to such generous supporters as Justin Carpenter, a wonderful host, I might add, Nolden, Zangamarth, Charlie Dunst, Anonymous Benefactor, John Madigan, Johnny Millennium, Sanguine Games, Misha Van Doren, Craig Patterson, Frank Grizzy, Tim J, Lolo De Puzzlo, Joshua C. Ritchie, Jared C. Rice, Darren Chow, Sonic Rose, EX Potemkin, Alicia Gorenson, also a wonderful host, Argyle Jelly, Mechazaurus, DG Jono, and Doug Russell. Thanks as well to all other patrons, and to all of you lovely subscribers, commenters, and watchers. I do appreciate your company, as always, in these grand adventures of ours, and I hope you'll join me for more. Till next time, have a good one.